This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. As many of you who have been watching and listening to our Standing Watch programs and our sermons know, I have been saying now for many years that the United States of America will fall and that at the same time Europe under German leadership will rise. Now this has nothing to do with wishful thinking, it has to do with what the Bible tells you. And at the end of this program I will offer to you three booklets, totally free of charge. And I encourage you to write for them and study them carefully because it will give you a lot of information from the Bible as to what is prophesied. Today I want to elaborate a little bit on the events as they take place. And here's an article which was published by Der Spiegel Online, a German magazine, dated August 5. And listen carefully to what they have to say. John Kerry has spent, mo has spent months rushing from one conflict to the next, but has little show for it. His failures are symptomatic of an America that lacks a foreign policy identity and of a country that seems uncomfortable with its role as a superpower. In recent days, global diplomacy has seemed like an absurd form of theater, with John Kerry in the role of the tragic hero. He doesn't look like the Secretary of State from a world power, but like an alien who just disembarked his spaceship in the Mideast. The helplessness of the world's most important foreign minister shows just how little influence the U.S. still has in the Middle East. And with each failure, Washington's influence in the rest of the world erodes as well. A civil war is raging in eastern Ukraine. An agreement with Iran over its nuclear program is still a long way off. Islamist terrorists now control large swaths of Iraq and the U.S. doesn't appear to be in a position to do anything about it. As part of a government that is steering America away from its traditional role as global hegemon, Kerry also embodies the dilemma of the United States' global role in the 21st century. How successful can a U.S. foreign policy be? if it depends more on strong words than it does on tanks and aircraft carriers. The U.S. remains the world's only superpower, but it is also on the search for a new foreign policy identity. It is a country divided. And a country divided, a house divided, cannot and will not stand. At the same time, we read about interesting thoughts which Europeans utter. Here's an article by Der Tagesspiegel and it is translated by the Foreign Federal Office. It was published on July 21. It's actually an article written by German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier. And I thought his words are very interesting. He says in here that the Middle East is coming undone. Shiites are fighting against Sunnis, radical against even more radical fundamentalists, Kurds against Arabs, terrorists against Democrats and against dictators. Neighboring countries in the region as well as major powers are providing their proxies with money as well as arms. The international community has not adopted a coherent approach. The ISIS terrorist group is extending its power base in Syria and Iraq and wants to sweep away the existing states. We should think, now listen carefully, we should think about a new order for the Middle East, which could redefine and guarantee the security interests of all parties. No one expects such efforts to lead to overnight success. However, a start should be made, and the sooner the better. We owe that not only to people in the regions where tens of thousands have been murdered and millions forced to leave their homes, for this will also help ensure our own security. Syria is a training ground for thousands of European jihadists who practice there what they subsequently want to carry out in our cities. And there's a real threat 
that Iraq will go the same way. This cannot be allowed to happen, for this conflict concerns us, and much more so than many want to believe. I think his words are almost prophetic, because we read in the Bible that ultimately Europe under German leadership will invade the Middle East because of, amongst other things, security concerns. They know already that the United States cannot be relied on to do anything of the kind. They know that it has to be Europe and Europe alone which will do it. And the Bible prophesies that that is exactly what is going to happen. But more is indicated. And I thought the following article by the Irish Times dated August 2 is quite interesting. It talks about the man who would be Kaiser. And it says, after Germany lost a Second World War, the Allies in occupied Berlin passed a law stating, the Prussian state, which from early days has been a bearer of militarism and reaction in Germany, has de facto ceased to exist. Prussia dominated Germany's history for centuries. Mention Prussia to Germans today, and they will trot out the Prussian virtues, discipline, punctuality, deference to hierarchy, that many outsiders consider utterly German traits. Prince Georg, who is actually Kaiser Wilhelm II's great-great-grandson. Kaiser Wilhelm II was the one who abdicated after World War I. Prince Georg has no crown. And he is not a prince under the law of the Federal Republic of Germany, which recognizes the old title Prince of Prussia only as part of his surname. But he, the article goes on to say, he has an energy of a man and a mission to restore and restore and rehabilitate his family's history, good and bad. It says his striking resemblance to Kaiser Wilhelm II, he jokes, makes it a delicate affair. He is now the head of the House of Hohenzollern. And although they lost their aristocratic titles in 1918, the Hohenzollerns and other former ruling houses live on around Germany. And now notice very carefully the following comment. After seven decades in the Third Reich's shadow, Prussia is emerging again as a new generation of Germans shuffle the historical hand they have been dealt. Now who is giving that historical hand to them. It's all based on biblical prophecy, you see. It goes on to say, Berlin is back on the political map and Germany's role in Europe is shifting before our eyes. Prince Georg sees Germany's role in Europe differently from previous generations. I think it is clear to all that Germany should assume a leading role in Europe, he says. And then when it comes to the restoration of the monarchy. He kind of jokes about it. He says, the question of a return of the monarchy is not relevant at the moment. I felt that was very interesting, the wording, at the moment. It may not be relevant at the moment, but the Bible strongly indicates, if you read in the book of Revelation, that ultimately there will be 10 kings who will give their power and their authority in Europe to a very charismatic political and military leader who is referred to as the beast in the book of Revelation. Now it says 10 kings. It doesn't have to mean 10 monarchs, but it could mean that. Because in the past, of course, when you think in terms of the revivals of the ancient Roman Empire in Europe, 10 of which have been prophesied, nine of which have occurred, always kings were involved. Well, perhaps with the exception of the Ninth Revival under Hitler and Mussolini. Of course, Mussolini thought he was a king or a Caesar. But anyway, it's interesting that the discussion regarding the monarchies is ongoing in light of biblical indications. Now, to show you how much Germans are becoming influential in the world, here's an article by the Army Times, dated July 31 saying that a German army brigadier general, the name is Markus Laubenthal, 
who recently served with NATO forces in Afghanistan, is assuming duties as the Chief of Staff of U.S. Army Europe. The first time a non-American officer, and I might say a German officer, has held that position. So it seems to me that even in these kind of matters over there in Europe, America's influence is diminishing more and more, and Germans are the ones mainly who are kind of filling the void. This is all very remarkable in the light of biblical prophecy. As I said at the beginning of the program, I have three booklets, absolutely free of charge, which I like to offer to you. And I would strongly encourage you to write for them. One is called, is that in the Bible? The Mysteries of the Book of Revelation. And this is almost like a commentary which goes through the book of Revelation and points out most important statements insofar as specifically our times are concerned, leading to the return of Jesus Christ. Another booklet, The Ten European Revivals of the Ancient Roman Empire, showing you again from biblical prophecies that the ancient Roman Empire fell, but it would be revived ten times. And when the last resurrection, the last revival of the ancient Roman Empire in Europe is occurring, which is starting to happen in front of our very eyes right now, then soon thereafter Jesus Christ will return. And the third booklet I'd like to offer to you is called Biblical Prophecy from Now Until Forever. And that also goes into all the biblical prophecies leading to the return of Jesus Christ, telling us what is going to happen after his return. What is he going to do? Why is he going to return? What is the kingdom of God all about? What is your potential when it comes to your life after you die? Do you know anything about this? Do you have any clear understanding and clear conviction as to what is going to happen to you when you die? What happened to your loved ones who already died? There is a lot of confusion out there. Even in traditional Christianity, people just don't know. But the Bible makes it very clear what is going to happen, what is happening, and what will happen to you and to your loved ones. And let me just say, you don't have to be concerned that they might be tortured right now in an ever-burning hellfire. These booklets are going to explain it to you from the pages of the Bible. All you need to do is to write us and to ask for biblical prophecy, the book of Revelation, and the ten European revivals. I'm looking forward to your requests. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.